Stephanie. When you presented to a local public your report on the Paris talks, you introduced a topic that was new to me, and that was the clean energy economy. And to that end, I, when I talk to an audience, whether it's Audubon or, or even individuals, friends and family, I talk to them about how to promote alternative energy sources to enhance or to uh, drive the clean energy economy. I've, I've sort of found that this is the lowest hanging fruit because talking about um, oh greenhouse gases or the, the melting polar ice cap or the rising sea level just uh, goes right over their heads. They they don't want to accept that. But clean energy is something that everybody has wants because they don't want to live with dirty, dirty energy, uh, either for them or for their heirs. So I would be interested in, in some of your, uh, your perspective on how to promote the clean energy economy, alternative energy sources. Uh, could you share that, please? If, um one way we like to do it at EcoWatch is to just share the success stories. So there are so many success stories with renewable energy all over the world. It's just incredible. Um, so that, that's one, one great way. Um, and then there's really am amazing statistics that have come out over the last many years that show that um, the cost for renewable energy, especially solar panels, has dramatically decrease. The amount of installed capacity per quarter and even of last year, renewables are winning out. Um, the fact that we know that we have to leave fossil fuels, the majority of the remaining fossil fuels in the ground, um, just, you know, there's just no other choice. So a clean energy future, a clean energy economy, um, a world that relies on renewable energy is our future. Um, other ways I love to talk about innovation. I love to talk about Elon Musk and Solar City. The, um, he's on, I think he's the president of the board of Solar City. And then, of course, he's the founder and CEO of Tesla Motors. And the power, power wall battery, um, po battery storage, actually, I love content on battery storage that does really well on EcoWatch. I'm like, wow, people really get it. You know, um, and try and steer clear or at least set the record straight on myths about renewable energy. Um, yes, if the sun's not shining, the panels aren't generating power, but we can store that power. You know, we have a, a grid our grid needs to be revamped, but there's, you know, a lot of new innovative ways to store energy today. Um, you know, just the positive message that we are a world that can um, be powered by renewable energy, I think, is a really great direction to go. Um, and then you can start to talk about some individuals like Mark Jacobson from Stanford, who's come up with a plan of exactly how every country in the entire world and each continent can transition to renewable energy. And you read it and it just makes sense. So I think the more information, the positive stories of countries and places that are actually doing it to get that word out. Um, I was super fortunate to speak at a climate conference in Copenhagen and I wanted to go to the island of Samso. It's the first island in the world to go 100% renewable and I had the chance to spend, I spent about, I think it was 28 hours there and it was amazing. First hand I wrote a piece, a five page piece on EcoWatch that explains my entire time there from um, you know solar and wind and all the things that they have um, integrated and then talking about Germany and what they've done with renewable energy. So really pulling in these positive renewable energy stories that show that renewables work. And um, I think that is gonna make people wanna engage more and understand the importance of you know, cleaning our air and, um, and our water and the impacts of you know, carbon and carbon dioxide and uh, the atmosphere, um, as well as just how dirty it is for people. Um, so if you're talking to health professionals or people who are more engaged in the health and wellness world, 
we can talk about you know the positive impact that changing to renewables has on human health. So I think just being on the you know high energy and positive um, direction toward where we can head and showing the positive examples that exist around the world. Um, one of my favorite thoughts about the transition to renewable energy is really looking at, they call it um, people who um, are in energy poverty. So there's places all over the world where people don't have energy. And what's so exciting is they are completely leapfrogging the like industrial revolution or the, um, the um, you know, large coal fire power plants. And they're installing um, their own community-based solar projects that are bringing electricity to the first time to their villages and they own that power. So instead of going from the big centralized type coal-fired power plant, they're doing renewable energy stations that they have that they own and it benefits their community. So um, those kind of stories I think are fantastic because they never had to deal, you know, per se with um, fossil fuel company coming in and building the big coal fire power plant that makes the planet unhealthy, makes the people unhealthy. They don't then have control of that energy that they can't even afford. Um, and Greenpeace has been a leader in that as well as so many other organizations and companies um, to bring this energy, this renewable clean energy to these communities for the first time. Thanks very, very much. Um, this